Donald Trump in the Diplomatic Room at the White House, October 2, 2017, by Joshua Roberts Reuters. At first it sounded like hyperbole, the escalation of a Twitter war. But now it's clear that Bob Corker's remarkable New York Times interview, in which the Republican senator described the White House as adult daycare and warned Trump could start World War III, was an inflection point in the Trump presidency. It brought into the open what several people close to the president have recently told me in private that Trump is unstable, losing a step, and unraveling, the conversation among some of the president's longtime confidantes, along with the character of some of the leaks emerging from the White House has shifted. There's a new level of concern. NBC News published a report that Trump shocked his national security team when he called for a nearly tenfold increase in the country's nuclear arsenal during a briefing this summer. One Trump advisor confirmed to me it was after this meeting disbanded that Secretary of State Rex Tillerson called Trump a moron. In recent days, I spoke with a half-dozen prominent Republicans and Trump advisors, and they all describe a White House in crisis as advisors struggle to contain a president who seems to be increasingly unfocused and consumed by dark moods. Trump's ire is being fueled by his stalled legislative agenda and, to a surprising degree, by his decision last month to back the losing candidate Luther Strange in the Alabama Republican primary. Alabama was a huge blow to his psyche, a person close to Trump said. He saw the cult of personality was broken, according to two sources familiar with the conversation, Trump vented to his longtime security chief, Keith Schiller, I hate everyone in the White House there are a few exceptions, but I hate the May White House official denies this. Two senior Republican officials said Chief of Staff John Kelly is miserable in his job and is remaining out of a sense of duty to keep Trump from making some sort of disastrous decision. Today, speculation about Kelly's future increased after Politico reported that Kelly's deputy Kirst Janielson is likely to be named Homeland Security Secretary. The theory among some Republicans is that Kelly wanted to give her a soft landing before his departure. Video The stakes are too high for the Trump presidency to be funny One former official even speculated that Kelly and Secretary of Defense James Mattis have discussed what they would do in the event Trump ordered a nuclear first strike. Would they tackle him, the person said? Even Trump's most loyal backers are sowing public doubts. This morning, the Washington Post quoted longtime Trump friend Tom Barrack saying he has been shocked and stunned by Trump's behavior. While Kelly can't control Trump's tweets, he is doing his best to physically sequester the president, much to Trump's frustration. One major GOP donor told me access to Trump has been cut off, and his outside calls to the White House switchboard errant put through to the Oval Office. Earlier this week, I reported on Kelly's plans to prevent Trump from mingling with guests at Mar-a-Lago later this month. And, according to two sources, Keith Scheller quit last month after Kelly told Scheller he needed permission to speak to the president and wanted written reports of their conversations. The White House denies these accounts. The president's mood is good and his outlook on the agenda is very positive, an official said. West Wing aides have also worried about Trump's public appearances, one Trump advisor told me. The advisor said aides were relieved when Trump declined to agree to appear on the season premiere of 60 Minutes last month. He's lost a step. They don't want him doing adversarial TV interviews, the advisor explained. Instead, Trump has sat down for friendly conversations with Sean Hannity and Mike Huckabee, whose daughter is Trump's press secretary. The White House official says the 60 Minutes interview is being rescheduled. Even before Corker's remarks, some West Wing advisors were worried that Trump's behavior could cause the cabinet to take extraordinary constitutional measures to remove him from office. Several months ago, according to two sources with knowledge of the conversation, former chief strategist Steve Bannon told Trump that the risk to his presidency wasnt impeachment, but the 25th Amendment, the provision by which a majority of the cabinet can vote to remove the president. When Bannon mentioned the 25th Amendment, Trump said, what's that? According to a source, Bannon has told people he thinks Trump has only a 30 percent chance of making it the full term. This post has been updated to clarify the details of the negotiation with 60 Minutes. Full screen photos Trump's 100 days of failure It took less than two days after his inauguration for Trump to hit his first speed bump. After photos revealed a drastically smaller crowd at Trump's inauguration than at Obama's first, Trump griped about the coverage during a speech at the CIA and claimed that a million and a half people showed up. He later backed down from the remarks, but not before two things happened. First, the world was introduced to Trump's press secretary, Sean Spicer, whose first, apoplectic, rumpled press briefing became a flashpoint of its own. And second, Trump aide Kellyanne Conway introduced alternative facts into the lexicon.
Photo left by Lucas Jackson Pool Getty Images right by Jules Somata FBGT Images. In its unanimous ruling, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals refused to reinstate Trump's original controversial executive order on immigration, which would have suspended travel by Nanu s citizens from seven predominantly Muslim countries. In a rebuke of the White House, the court argued that the travel ban violated due process and was based on religious discrimination. Photo by Stephanie Keith Getty Images Less than one month into Trump's presidency, his national security adviser, Mike Flynn, resigned in scandal after it was revealed that he had discussed the sanctions against Moscow with Russian ambassador Sergei Kislyak before the inauguration, contrary to what he told White House officials, including Vice President Mike Pence. Flynn has remained a primary character in the enduring trump Russia melodrama, most recently coming under scrutiny for failing to disclose payments from the Russian and Turkish governments before joining the Trump administration. Photo by Mario Tamagetti Images. Facing escalating pressure on Capitol Hill after it was reported that he met with Sergei Kislyak, the man at center of Flynn's downfall, twice last year, U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions recused himself from the ongoing FBI probe into the Trump campaign's ties to the Russian government. Sessions' announcement reportedly blindsided and infuriated Trump, prompting him leave Stephen Bannon and Reigns Priebus behind when he took off for Mar-a-Lago. Photo by Nicholas Kamaf BGT Images. A few months after the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals shot down his travel ban, Trump lashed out at another judge who blocked the administration from stripping federal funding from cities that did not comply with anti-immigration laws. The judge who ruled in the case was not a circuit judge, William Orrick, in fact, is a district judge, but that didnt stopped Trump from threatening to break up the Ninth Circuit altogether, a preemptive strike as in appeal of Orrick's ruling could end up in the circuit court. Photo by Nicholas Kamaf BGT Images once Trump seemingly realized the gravity of his failure to pass a health care reform bill in the House, the White House quietly tried to resurrect the zombie Trump care bill as it scrambled to secure a legislative win for Trump before the 100-day mark. The effort failed again, miserably. Photo Saul Loeb This was not so much one defining moment, as it was a slow buildup of smaller moments that time he realized repealing and replacing Obamacare would be difficult nobody knew health care could be so complicated. That time he realized that China could not curb the nuclear threat of North Korea by itself after listening for 10 minutes, I realized it's not so easy. But what started off as a Politico report about the frustrations of our president, grew and grew over the past three months and culminated in the perfect statement, given to Reuters, on day 98 I loved my previous life. I had so many things going. This is more work than in my previous life. I thought it would be easier, photo from Getty Images.